All right, everybody, it's about that time again, talking about college basketball. Now, I know I got a lot of flack last week about Illinois, and again, sorry about that. Didn't know. <laughs> but hey, we got through this week, not without controversy, though. Not without a little, not without Corona Chan. Oh, you can't forget about Corona Chan. She is a fierce, fierce virus. And she has shut down Gonzaga. So there was no one versus two matchup that we were supposed to see on Saturday. None of that. Pac-12 has started conference play, but it's already just gone completely terrible. You know, uh, the games are already being pushed back. I mean, there's been other games where other conferences that are starting conference play very soon that are getting pushed back. And stuff like that, so it's just crazy. You know, she is a fierce, fierce queen. She is a fierce queen. I will tell you that. So, Wisconsin got upset by Marquette. Last second tip in. Oregon got upset also. You know, Virginia, Michigan State, Kansas struggled a little bit during, you know, the course of the week as well and most of the other teams took care of business but Kentucky Kentucky did not take care of business this week they did not take care of business that does not lead us directly into the into the Champions Classic but it will lead us into the team of the week the real team of the week honestly was my Texas Longhorns yeah we all had to put up with Bill Walton for three days so um Honestly, that was an experience in and of itself. I think I paid attention more to Bill Walton than, than one of the actual games itself. I think it was the Indiana game because it was just so, I don't know what's mesmerizing about this man talking history instead of the game. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, as I've got my notes with me here, Maui. The Maui Invitational took place in Asheville, North Carolina, instead of Maui, you know, like it traditionally does. Um, but yeah, I think the team of the week, honestly, is my Texas Longhorns. Very solid group. We did lose to Villanova today. Um, Colin Gillespie didn't really do too much. It ended up being just more in the bench that really helped Villanova out in that game. You know, Villanova needed to bounce back after losing last week, and they got what they needed, a big-time victory for the Wildcats. But don't worry, Longhorns, don't worry. Shaka Smart with hair now. (laughs) He's got hair, and he's got a solid, solid veteran group with some young guys that are coming up. You know, Jericho Sims came back. I'm very glad that he came back. Courtney Ramey, Matt Coleman, you know, and the new guy, Greg Brown. Solid core that can play, you know, they don't – they're not, they're not about one guy and then everybody else like Iowa is. Luca Garza went off again, by the way. He had 41 in one game and then like 30 in another. He's averaging like 30 points a game. So, I don't know now. Big time matchup on the 19th. Hopefully, Gonzaga gets, gets things together, speaking of Iowa. So, we can see that matchup. Big time matchup there. But, yeah. Longhorns, very solid team. They can play. They can share the ball. They can, they can, they, I mean, they can play some damn good defense, especially against Indiana. Held them to 44 points, and they shot 23% from the field. Absolutely disgusting performance by the Hoosiers. A former, well, they're still technically a blue blood, but hey, they haven't performed like it. And Race Thompson, Trace Jackson, they didn't really show me anything about them. I didn't even have these guys in my radar. That's how that's how many stars there are in college basketball. That's how many guys that could potentially get drafted in college basketball. We haven't even talked about Cade Cunningham from Oklahoma State yet. Because there's no reason to right now. Because Oklahoma State's not playing anybody important right now. I, I do know the Big East, Big Ten, I mean the Big East, Big 12 battle has sort of kind of started. But I'm not really going to talk about that. That's not really the focus for, you know, this week going into the next week. And then, you know, the real focus is about, you know, uh, some midweek games next week, honestly. But anyway, back to what I was about to say. 
Um, Indiana should be tough the Big Ten. I know the Big Ten has been touted up, has been held up as this very, very elite conference this year, but I don't think they'll surpass the Big 12. They'll be very close. They've got a lot of good teams in it, but I don't think it will be, you know, don't think it will be the Big 12 level just yet. You know, there's a lot of parity in the Big Ten, a lot of parity in these other big conferences. But I don't think they'll pass the Big 12. Big 12 is just the best conference. That's just coming from me. <laughs> uh, but the con- the real conference of the week was the Atlantic 10. Davidson played by Longhorn stuff. They got a lot of threes in that game. In the first game of the Maui Invitational, Richmond ended up upsetting Kentucky last week. And St. Louis beat LSU as well. I mean, they, I mean, Kentucky just could not do anything. And we'll talk about Kentucky in a moment. Again, you know, we've already seen Kentucky get upset by Richmond. They didn't play too well in the Champions Classic. But I want to talk about North Carolina first. Uh, they're a very tough group. You know, I'll say that as we continue to talk about the Maui Invitational. A very tough group. We took one last shot at the very end to beat them. I think Garrison Brooks will lead this North Carolina team. Very young team. Got a lot of players around it. But don't sleep on Caleb Love and KJ Smith. They are some guys that are very solid as well. They can help back him up. You know. So Texas wins the Maui Invitational. They do lose to Villanova on Sunday. And I mean, it's okay. It's okay. We still got a long way to go in the season. And Corona Chad is not going to be giving their city favors either. So we got to hope that we continue to see good performances like, you know, like the North Carolina Texas game on Wednesday. Very good game, honestly. So now we move on to the Champions Classic and the Duke Blue Devils, who lost to the Michigan State Spartans. And honestly, a lot of mistakes were made by the Duke Blue Devils. They had a very early 13-3 lead early, very early on in this game. And then, and then, things just started looking rough, you know. There was a lot of shots that were just not good, not good looks. And they lost, you know, they just lost momentum to Michigan State very, very early. Jalen Johnson is a guy that... You know, that's he's, he's, there's a lot of people that are high on him, but he just did not look too good in this game. You know, I mean, Matthew Hurt looked good in this game. You know, he got a double-double. That's good, right? You know, and he, he dominated Duke's game on Saturday. I forgot who he played on Saturday. Don't have, you know, scores and stuff right by me. I have my notes with me instead this week. Again, like I already said. Keeping on going with Michigan State, I think they're a very solid veteran core. I cannot wait to see them against Virginia, you know, Big Ten ACC Challenge. That'll be, well, technically this week, and we'll talk about that on Monday. And Rocket Watts, Joey Hauser, the transfer from Marquette, you know, and Julius Marble, you know, who came from the bench from that game, Aaron Henry, and I believe, you know, People were saying that he could have been drafted. I, I didn't know that. I did I did not think that I thought Cassius would be the only guy that got drafted from Michigan State. But apparently, I guess Aaron Henry, Aaron Henry was supposed to be drafted as well. But yes, he decided, you know, hey, I'm going to come back to Michigan State. So the other game of the Champions Classic, another big matchup, Kentucky, Kansas. And Kentucky just cannot shoot the three ball. They went three for 20 in the game against Kansas. I don't think they made a three-pointer against Richmond, and I have no idea about Georgia Tech. You know, they got absolutely molly by Georgia Tech, you know. And this game with Kansas, they really kind of just got beat up a little bit, just beat up throughout the week, the Wildcats were. They are struggling. Olivier Saar has to lead these young guys. You know these guys are one and done for the most part at Kentucky. I mean... I mean, there is some promise in the Kansas game. Isaiah Jackson had eight blocks at least. I don't remember the final count, but he had eight blocks in that game. Speaking of Kansas, oh, those Jayhawks. Oh, those Jayhawks. Jalen Wilson dominated the second half. 
he looks like a guy that could really, you know, take the momentum away. He had 20-plus against Kentucky in the second half. I wonder, you know, how long will Bill Self go with the five-guard rotation? I don't know how many big men they have, but they've been going with the five-guard. They went with the five-guard rotation a lot in that game against Kentucky that I did see. And Agbaji also looked good. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but Agbaji, he looked pretty good for Kansas. And we got to mention Dick Vitale because I just I just don't like ESPN's coverage. I'm not going to lie to you. It is rough sometimes. But he did, But there was this hilarious moment where he was like in one of the, in one of the Champions Classic games. I think it was the Kansas-Kentucky game. I'm not sure. I don't remember which game it was. But he was like... He was pretty distracted himself, but he was like to his wife at halftime, hey, go make, <laughs> make some pizza. Like, bro, can you give me some pizza? Uh, I don't know. But the point of the matter is, is that ESPN's, you know, commentators kind of annoyed me throughout the week. But that was, you know, Tuesday night. What about Wednesday? And there was a big day already in the Maui final. So what happened to Gonzaga this week? Well... You know, aside from, you know, Corona Chan already messing things up for them. They had a player test positive. They had one staff member test positive, and they struggled against West Virginia, you know, for the most part. Like, Drew Timmy, Coach Kispert, pretty much missing for, you know, some of that game. And Jalen Suggs got injured. They came back at the game, and they, but, and, and, and it, it did. And then, the depth came in. The depth. Mostly Ayayi and, and, and Habram, you know, who really shined in the rest of that game against West Virginia. Just the depth of this Gonzaga team. I don't know when they'll play again, but the depth of this team is very, very solid. And I wish we could have seen that matchup with Baylor. Speaking of, you know, West Virginia, on the other hand, you know, Culver, um, oh God, I have his name here in the notes, uh, Shibwe, yeah, Shibwe, I guess, I'll, I'll, I'll try again, I'm not good with names half the time, but Shibwe, Culver, played very well, they left the transition, you know, they kept the transition plays limited against Gonzaga in the first half. And in the second half, oh no, 60 to 30 in the paint. You got to score more in the paint, West Virginia. Foul troubles. Also played Bob Huggins' team. And some bad three-point shots, you know, throughout the second half. Try and get West Virginia back into it. Did not happen. Did not happen in West Virginia. You know, they lose to Gonzaga. It's rather unfortunate. But hey. Strong again, strong team, strong team by you know by Bob Huggins that he's got, and I'm sure there'll be a challenge in Big 12 play as we continue to move on here. Now to the big part, Illinois Baylor. Again, Illinois fans were a little bit mad at me because I hadn't watched Illinois play, but again, matchups like. North Carolina A&T and Ohio and Chicago State, who should not be Division One at all. In fact, they should drop athletics altogether and just close the school down. Do not excite me. What does excite me is big-time matchups with big-time teams. And big-time, you got to show up in big-time. And, again, you did play respectively against Baylor. You did play very, very well with them for the most part. But your stars, Kofi Coburn... Io Dawson, they didn't play very, very well. They did enough, but it wasn't enough. I mean, I don't have anything on Adam Miller in these notes. Just absolutely non-existent. But, it, but Illinois will go through those two guys, I think. It should be a good, good time, you know. Dusunu, you know, he's scoring at record's pace. You know, he's scoring at good pace, 24 a game. And, I mean, he's got to prep for Duke, the Dukies. You know, Illinois has to prep for, you know, the Blue Devils. Tuesday night, I think. But we'll talk about that game, you know, again on Monday. 
As far as Baylor goes, the guards, Jared Butler, I already talked about him last week. But, I mean, it is a very legit team, I think. Suffocating better in defense. Very suffocating against, you know, the fight in the line eye. And with Butler, Mitchell, Flagler, Teague, you know, I think this team could go a long, long way, you know. Predictions are, you know, they come in and stuff like that, and they think that Baylor, you know, could be one of these teams that could go all the way to win a, a national championship this year, and I think so too. I'm definitely one of those guys. You know, they went, they won 23 straight to end the year last year, and they they kept it going this week. But yeah. I mean, Baylor, maybe Illinois, it it was close for a long while, but then Baylor pulled away a little bit too late, you know, and it was too little too late for the fight in the line at. But again, another big-time matchup for Illinois this week. It's a shame that we couldn't get the Baylor game this week, but Baylor has a big matchup Sunday, next Sunday as well, so there's that. It's my Texas Longhorns, so there's that on the docket. I don't know how the top 25 will change. I think Kentucky will fall out. And there's also a big game for West Virginia next Sunday as well. It was either this Sunday or next Sunday. I don't, I don't know. It was, it was next Sunday or the Sunday afterwards with Richmond. So that'll be interesting to see see what the Spiders can do you know, against that, that press defense. And overall, I think this week really showed that there's a lot of teams that could contend for a national title this week. I really think there's a lot. Okay, it probably won't be Kentucky. I don't think, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Kentucky has to get their act together. It's only, it's only been two weeks, honestly. It's only been two weeks into the season. But Kentucky has to get their act together. They really do. You know, you don't get blasted by Georgia Tech like that. Georgia Tech is not really a basketball school. Know, to be, you know, just c- c- to be considered good, you know, a good basketball school in the ACC. They're just not that right now, right now at least. So for Kentucky to get basically blown out like that at the losing against Richmond last week, a very good Richmond team, mind you. There is some concern out there, big concerns. And I think, you know, the conferences that are starting conference play early, you know, they got a couple games in. I think it'll be a great gauge into what the world's going on with college basketball. But there's also Corona Chan to worry about, so we'll see what she does. She's already messed up some things, and she's going to keep on doing it. So with that being said, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow to talk about some more college basketball. I do will update my notes for this week. We'll see you.